What follows in the next series of lectures is the most valuable learning opportunity that you have for this particular thought primer. It's going to be a good check-in for you to determine how well you're understanding literally everything we've discussed in the course so far, and equally important, how prepared you are to tackle this week's thought primer problem. So you want to make sure that you really carefully work through the task that I set for you, and just don't run through it and watch me work through stuff. You've got to actually do the work. That's how you're going to learn. All right, we have an argument. The argument says this, Miley Cyrus sings what she wants. Hence, since she sings country songs, it follows that she must want to sing country songs. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to translate this ordinary language argument into a standard form categorical syllogism using the step-by-step -step process that we run over in the previous lectures, okay? That process is this. Step number one, identify the conclusion and premise statements of this argument. Look for premise and conclusion indicator words to help you accomplish step number one. After you've identified your premise and conclusion statements, you want to identify or create terms that you can eventually use in a standard form categorical syllogism. In other words, identify terms that are either plural nouns or noun phrases. Once you've created an inventory of terms, you want to make sure that you have reduced that list down to three. So for example, if I created an inventory of terms for my argument and I looked at it and I had four terms and I saw that one of the terms was true statements and one of the terms was false statements, I would re I would eliminate the, the term false statements. And then anytime I wanted to refer to false statements in my argument, I would just say non-true or non-t in my argument. Okay, so you want to reduce your inventory of terms down to three. And then you want to write the argument using standard form statements. And again, immediately symbolizing the argument is fine. In other words, after you've identified your terms and assigned each one of them a letter, you can use uh, the letters that refer to your terms in standard form categorical statements to symbolize the argument in standard form statements. After you symbolize the argument or write out the argument in standard form statements, you may find that you have some term complements in the argument. And if that's the case, you want to use the operations of conversion, aversion, or contraposition to reduce down the number of terms to three. You want to have three terms that appear exactly two times each, the same way each time they appear. After you've got an argument in, uh, with three terms, two times each, the exact same way both times, arrange the argument in standard form. Remember, it's not just that we have to have standard form categorical statements comprising our, our syllogism. We also have to have the premises in a particular order. Major premise appears first, minor premise appears second, conclusion appears last. Then we're ready to test the argument for validity by creating a Venn diagram. And of course, we always want to check our work by applying the five rules and by determining, determining the argument's form and cross-referencing that with our inventories of valid forms. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Don't skip these steps. You need to work through each one of these steps in order to get to a final product uh, that uh, reflects this argument being either valid or invalid. And when you're ready to start checking your work, you'll move on to the next lecture.